Aloha and good morning. I am Mark Schlaub, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Today our program is titled A Tale of Two Citizenships and my guest is Ray Suchiyama. Ray and I became friends in Hawaii in the 80s and the 90s and then he disappeared from our islands for about 20 years. During that time Ray worked in Japan. He's now back in Hawaii and I'm very happy to have him with me today. Ray and I will discuss dual citizenship, an interesting subject that seems to come into the news every so often, most recently during the US presidential election. And as in many of the programs that I have hosted on Law Across the Sea, there's a personal angle to this discussion which will be unveiled as we progress, I think. Welcome, Ray. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Uh, first of all, what is dual citizenship? Well, I'll go to a uh, document that I have, my passport okay. uh, of the United States of America. And through the passport, I show it around the world that I am a citizen of the United States of America, wherever I go. And that uh, people should kind of give me, you know, all kinds of uh, benefits uh, in, in the U.S. But, and, and rights. But in the passport on number 14, there's a section on dual citizens. It says a person who has the citizenship of more than one country at the same time is considered a dual citizen. A dual citizen may be subject to the laws of the other country that considers that person its citizen while in that country's jurisdiction, including conscription for military service. Mm. So the passport says you cannot be a dual citizen. It just says, uh, it defines a dual citizen and that uh, just be aware of you know, issues uh, while you live in another country because you may be in the army of another country and that's maybe scary or you know, so something may happen to you. Uh, but it doesn't deny the fact that dual citizenship exists. It's, in other words, it's a little bit vague and ambiguous in a way. It, it says uh, this may happen. That, that's correct. <laughs> and so uh, this whole topic of dual citizenship is ambiguous and murky because there is no set of international laws. There's never been a convention that really sets forth for all the signatories. And there have been, there've been kind of people uh, uh, and, and countries getting together and discussing it, uh, but they're not signatories to some convention, uh, like the Vienna Convention, that kind of uh, uh, that kind of protected diplomats so they won't be killed by <laughs> another country. Yeah. So, so that area is still ambiguous. So you, in other words, you're kind of on your own if you are a, a, a citizen of two countries. Now, tell me, how do you become a citizen of two countries? How, 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 does, how does that work? Good or question. How, how could you yeah, ever there's be? There's about three or four ways. One, that you are born in a country. But that doesn't automatically make you a citizen. You have to be a born in a country that states that if you're born in that country, you get the citizenship of that country. Okay. That's number one, okay. like the U.S. or Canada. So you'd be a citizen of that country. That's cor correct. Okay. And that uh, there are ways through parents, through one parent or two parents. Okay, but, but how do you become a dual? How, how, oh. If you're born in one country, you're, yeah. you, you might be considered a citizen of that country. That's right. Well, where does the dual, where does the other country come in? Well, uh, that uh, you, you have a, a parent who is an uh, Italian parent and another parent who's uh, Swiss. So you get two nationalities through your mother and father, for example. And that you were born in the U.S., therefore you get American citizenship and, also. And so those other two countries, they may uh, say you are a citizen of... That's country correct. Just because of your parents. That's correct. That's I correct. So, but again, uh, it's a murky area because there's some countries that uh, uh, allow you to be a dual citizen. Others that explicitly say dual citizenship is not allowed, and uh, but they don't enforce that. Okay. <laughs> and there are other countries that say you can be a dual citizen of these countries, and there's a list, but you cannot be a dual citizen of other countries. 
Okay. <laughs> so so uh, it, it is murky in a way, and there are other countries that say, um, uh, going back to dual citizens, that um, if you uh, uh, have another passport, uh, like uh, in Australia or Israel or some countries, that you cannot run for office of that country because you hold another passport or vote in, in a country. Yeah. Okay, so a dual a citizenship is somebody that was somehow gets born. Right, right. And then through fate is born in a certain country, may be considered a citizen of that country, and then has a parent that may be a citizenship of another country, and so you have dual, or maybe right. even but more than dual. Uh, complex. You go back to birth, the fact that I was born in Japan at the time of my birth, and my mother was a Japanese citizen at the time of my birth, had no bearing on me getting receiving Japanese citizenship. Because Are you a Japanese citizen? No. Okay. I, I, when you were born in Japan? Yes. Your mom <laughs> yeah. was Japanese? Right. Oh. At the time of my birth, yeah. and I know she was there. <laughs> <so forth. laughs> but the laws of Japan at that time was that it was through the father. I see. You see? And the your fa father was? Was a U.S. citizen. But he was a dual citizen <laughs> until the war. But because of the World War II, you couldn't be you know, in the U.S. Army and be a, a citizen of, another, of an enemy country. He renounced Japanese citizenship, and he was, of course, crossed out in Japan. And so uh, he, and he was in the U.S. Army for 20 years and he fought and, and was a loyal citizen. So, uh, but again, the idea of matrilineal or patrilineal mm -hmm. comes into play. And there are some countries like Israel and others that uh, bestow citizenship only through the mother. Okay. Yeah. Because, right. of course, I, I know biologically, who know, you know who your mother is. <laughs> I see. <laughs> who knows? <I> see. <laughs> Unless there's a DNA test, who your father is I back see. then. That's so, but in, in Confucian countries uh, like South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, so in many countries in the East Asia, they think the same. Therefore, unfortunately, it's a male dominated uh, system. Okay, now. Uh, okay, so you, you're a, a person who is a citizen of two countries. Let's just take, for example, I'm a citizen of the United States plus another country. Right. Recently in the news, something's come up about this, especially when uh, during the presidential election time. What, what was all that about? What? Well, uh, the issue during the last presidential election was, of course, Ted Cruz, who was uh, born in uh, Canada of okay. two parents who were U.S. citizens. Okay. And that the Constitution said that you had to be a natural born citizen. And Donald Trump, pr President Trump, right. made a big deal out right. of that. Yeah, I recall that, yeah. Uh, but Ted Cruz said he renounced Canadian citizenship in 2013, so, uh, but he was born in Canada. And this is, the, this is still a very uh, kind of uh, murky area uh, for uh, you know, w what happens if he became president and this became an issue and this forced him out of office. So yeah, this, well, yeah. uh, president Trump also mentioned this about Obama not being born in the United States. But uh, in this case, um, uh, uh, if you were born in Canada, I, I, you know, I always thought you had to be born in the United States to become president. Uh, and uh, that, that was what President Trump was saying about Obama. He wasn't born in the United States, so he couldn't become pr That's president. Right. But in this case, uh, you, you have uh, uh, Cruz was a, a, a dual, dual citizen right. because his parents were both U.S. Right. and U.S. grants uh, citizenship right. to children of U.S. citizens. That's correct. But he was born in Canada, yep. and he was, so he was considered a dual citizen of Canada also. Well, uh, can he become president? Uh, I mean, l l let's say. I mean, I, I, but again, that only is about presidential politics, also uh, in the uh, U.S. Uh, and uh, say uh, state politics, right? Uh, there was a uh, case in California where Arnold Schwarzenegger was a U.S. citizen, naturalized later in life. D you know, took it all upon himself to take the oath uh, of being naturalized, which s states explicitly that you must reject any kinds of you know, ties to princes, potentates, and other states. It's in there. But he was also a citizen of Austria. And he maintained that. He maintained that. And nobody cared because there's no really law in the, at the state level that you uh, have to um, uh, renounce other uh, citizenships. So, um, and you go to other countries, uh, for example, Japan. Right. Uh, there was uh, 
one or two at least prime ministers of Japan since World War II who were born in China or Manchuria. Okay. But that was part of the Japanese empire at that point, I but see, see. it was outside Japan, but it was part of the empire uh, uh, of Japan. But that didn't, that didn't mean anything uh, uh, to, uh, to the Japanese. So, and there was a case in Germany of a minister who had UK and German citizenship he is a minister of, of the Federal uh, Republic of Germany. So uh, laws in other countries, of course, are quite, quite different. However, in Japan, there was a uh, case with opposition party, Democratic Party, Renho Murata. She's uh, very popular right yes, now. Yes, but uh, she was originally a Taiwan citizen through her father and, and got Japanese citizenship after naturalization. And, and she held on to Taiwan citizenship until recently. And she renounced that, and now she's only a Japanese citizen. Right, right. Well, you know, there is a, uh, a biblical uh, phrase that you can't serve two masters that I've read and been reminded of many times, which seems to come up a lot with respect to this dual citizenship idea or concept. That's, I think, what Donald Trump was emphasizing when he talked about Cruz and I, I I think it had some effect on him I think it did uh, help his contest against Ted Cruz uh, and are there other politicians in the United States that have this same type of issue that could arise and, and or, or has well, come up but again it, it's about presidential politics yeah, yeah. and um, in, in uh, it's highly probable that there are, are um, uh, Mexican-American uh, politicians see, yeah, in yeah. The Texas, uh, you know, Arizona, New Mexico, Southern California, uh, uh, that uh, may have, uh, you know, Mexican citizenship uh, uh, also. From the parents? Uh, yeah, from the parents or from born, being born in Mexico. Wow. And, uh, but it's never been a huge issue, but it's, it's a very complex issue because there are uh, hundreds of thousands of probably Irish uh, uh, um, citizens who are also dual citizens in the U.S. And um, I, I don't want to delve into this uh, a lot, but you see, it depends on what country you also uh, have a dual citizenship. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, we had St. Patrick's Day. Right. We had Irish flags. We had, you know, uh, 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 everybody was proud to be Irish and, and, and so forth. And, um, but uh, imagine, uh, um, you know, uh, and, and Columbus Day, which is Italian-Americans, you know, yeah. which was our enemy during World War II, but it's okay now. <laughs> but, but imagine if uh, one of our, uh, you know, top uh, senators or a representative who was of Japanese descent participating in the Japanese, you know, Foundation Day, Constitution Day, and so forth, mm -hmm. and waving the Japanese flag. It, it, it is not culturally acceptable that much still in America. And, and it also kind of is a psychological barrier to those folks being elected, I think, uh, when, when it's brought up and, and thrown at them. And the, I want to go back and after our break talk a little bit about your dad okay. and, and what happened in World War II and with respect to his dual citizenship. Okay? All right. Thank you. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, I'm Tim Apicella. I'm the host of Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic issues here on Oahu. Uh, join us every other Tuesday at 12 noon and as we discuss how we try to solve our traffic headaches, not to, not to include just the rail, but transit and carpooling and everything in between. So join us every other Tuesday, Moving Hawaii Forward. Thank you. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. All right, we are back with Ray Suchiyama talking about dual citizenship. And this topic has really, Ray, been a topic that we've talked about maybe thousands of years. You can't serve two masters. And now, through World War II, 
this came up. It seems to come up when people are fighting with each other, doesn't it? Either in a, a war or elections. Now, what, what happened to your dad? What, well, tell, well, tell me a little bit about that. I, I want to talk to him just in a second, but when you say, you know, history, uh, if you go back to the annals of American law, in 1795, there was a case of Talbert uh, versus Jansen that the Supreme Court weighed in, in that you, uh, and they decided that you could have dual citizenship. Uh, and this person had French and American citizenship. During the War of 1812, it was all about dual citizenship because the British came in and took American sailors whom they believed were permanent British subjects, since they were originally British subjects uh, uh, today. And there are several countries out there, including Iran and, and Thailand and, and another one, that uh, does not allow you to renounce citizenship. It, it goes on forever and ever. So, so, and, and, uh, and so you're correct that dual citizenship came about as an issue during the start of World War One. And in fact, even in, in, the, in Hawaii, there was a German-American family that ran a company called Hackfelds. They, yeah, were, okay. and they were accused. Well known. Of, yes, well known they, and they were accused of being German sympathizers, and they held dual citizenship. And uh, they renounced German citizenship, changed their name to uh, their company to American Factors. <laughs> and they changed the name of their store to Liberty House. Okay, you see yeah. how uh, you're exactly right. And of course, it didn't uh, affect Japanese immigrants in Hawaii because Japan was an ally during World War I. World but, War I uh, yeah. and, and then right uh, at the time of World War I, my father was born, 1915, in, on Maui, in Kahului. Okay. So he was a U.S. citizen by birth. And his parents were? Japanese immigrants. Okay. So they held Japanese passports. Working on Maui? In, uh, in, in that the sugar plantation. Sugar uh, they came from okay. Kumamoto Prefecture. Okay. At the age of four, though, he was sent back to Japan to be educated. Okay. And he didn't come back to Maui uh, until he, uh, uh, well, my grandfather passed away uh, uh, in an accident. So he came back and graduated from Maui High School, class of 37. Okay. But he had to learn English again. Mm -hmm. And he was technically a dual citizen because he was in the Koseki, or a family register, back in, in Japan. Japan. Yes, that's right. correct. But he was born in the U.S. Hmm. What happened? World War II came about. That's right. And uh, all of a sudden... Because yeah, you're uh, a dual be, citizen. Because you're, you're, you could not be an enemy and walk around and, and, and be part of the U.S. Army. You're, you're, uh, uh, you're absolutely right. So he renounced Japanese citizenship. And in Japan, they you know, crossed him out. Yeah, and, and that's on, on, the, on the family registry? Registry, yes. It's crossed out. I've, I've gotten a copy about 20 years ago. Huh. And, and, but what happens with him is that um, his uh, draft card changes from 1A, which is uh, eligible for the draft immediately, is healthy and everything, to enemy alien ineligible for the draft uh, overnight. Although he was born in Wailuku Maui, a territory of Hawaii, which is part of the United States. And he was uh, uh, interned in, in Arkansas. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and, in, uh, and then, uh, uh, and after a while, he said, it was really great meeting other Japanese speakers. He was young and had three square meals a day, but he got <laughs> bored. <laughs> so, you know, you have to think of, of a young man, you know, oh, of, uh, uh, of that time. And so he volunteered for the army and, uh, and then um, uh, was in um, uh, Camp Shelby, uh, Mississippi uh, for basic training. Yeah, amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, where is the campus of Southern University of Southern Mississippi, yeah. which was ne not integrated until the mid '60s. Yeah. <laughs> and then he it, went to Europe. Isn't it funny? Yeah, yeah. It's very ironic. Things about because citizenship. Th because African Americans were also U.S. citizens, right? Wh who were s uh, supposed to have 100 percent equality with all. Uh, people in the U.S. Sometimes words make a difference, huh? Yeah, it's very, uh, very ironic. Or what goes on in people's minds <laughs> make a difference. Yeah? So he went to Europe, uh, came back, and during the Korea, uh, Korean War, he was back in Japan, and uh, and I was born in Japan. So, oh, so, so, so uh, that's that's how I am. And and but your your father was American. Yes. Your mother was Japanese, yes. as, as you mentioned. Yes. And Japan doesn't say you're, if you're born here, you're Japanese. Right. At the time of my birth. Right. What happens, though, uh, by the 70s and 80s, there, there were uh, a growing number of Japanese women marrying uh, non-Japanese men. Right. They couldn't bestow citizenship on their children. Okay. Uh, so the laws changed so that you, uh, a, fee, a mother could bestow citizenship on their children. Okay. So that was a big change. All right. Well, 
since I know this, how does that affect you and your family? Uh, my uh, daughter was born in, uh, in Honolulu, so she's a U.S. citizen, and plus she's a U.S. citizen through me, who uh, a U.S. citizen. Uh, she couldn't have been born anywhere in the, in the world. Uh, but she's a U.S. citizen through birth, but through her mother, who is a Japanese citizen, she became a Japanese citizen uh, simultaneously. So, and that's just because of her, her mom? Yes. And she's a dual citizen of Japan and the United States? Uh, my daughter, yes. And how do the countries look at that type of right. a situation? I'm not talking about your daughter specifically, right. but ju just in general. Uh, now, the majority of dual citizens uh, are, uh, are, are through uh, birth, uh, that their Japanese parents were uh, living in Los Angeles, Honolulu, San Francisco, New York. Mm -hmm. They happened to be there, and their child was born. Automatically, they're uh, a U.S. citizen. So that's the majority of cases like that. Uh, and, um, and so um, uh, they go back to Japan and have a U.S. passport uh -huh. right, for the future. Yep. Uh, but and and uh, they, of course, uh, have to file taxes. Uh, where, you know, in uh, the United States? Oh, yeah. Where, no, outside U.S. Oh, okay. uh, well, we'll get that to a moment. So what <laughs> happens to my daughter? Well, nothing really happens to my daughter. She has a Japanese passport and a U.S. passport. Uh -huh. She enters Japan on a Japanese passport. She can stay there forever until she dies because she needs no visa, right? And, and, uh, and then she comes to the U.S. with a U.S. passport. She can live here forever until she dies mm. because she's a citizen. Right. And so that automatically travel residence is easier, right? Uh, and... and uh, but, uh, uh, but the people who are U.S. citizens, like Boris Johnson, he was a, he's the current U foreign minister. UK, yeah. yeah, foreign minister of the uh, United Kingdom. He was born in New York. Okay. He, he left New York when he was three years old. <laughs> but he had to file taxes all during that time because he's a U.S. citizen. In the U.S.? No, 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 no. In, in, throughout the world. Oh, okay. See, you never uh, lived abroad uh, as a U.S. citizen, but uh, yeah, yeah. The, the U.S. tax law is, is uh, that it's very onerous <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, to yeah, exp yeah. expatriates uh, when you live, uh, you don't realize this until you live abroad. And then, uh, and then you live in a country where there's a, t uh, a tax regime, and then you have to file, and if you uh, have U.S. taxes, then you have, to, you have to pay the balance to the U.S. government. I see. Uh, citizens uh, of, of almost all European countries, Australia, Canada, pay nothing. No taxes on income sourced abroad, nothing. If they live abroad, uh, you know, 300 days a year or whatever, uh, uh, you know, for a year. Uh, so, uh, but that, Americans do. They have to file. Okay, so that, that may be a reason why you wouldn't want to be an American That's citizen. correct. And so there's been cases of uh, uh, Tina Turner was one uh, recently in Switzerland. Uh, there's people, uh, Mark Mobius, uh, who uh, had a hedge fund for many years. He researched that he had one grand grandfather who was a German citizen. He could return to Germany and get a German passport and so forth. So uh, you're right. So that's why so many people renounce because of taxes, uh, so, because they're living abroad. So it, it, the tax issue comes up. You, if I'm a U.S. citizen, no matter where I live, I'm going to have to pay taxes right. to the, the U.S. Right. And I think, wow, I don't want to do this. I, I, I want to just get rid of that and right. become a citizen of the other country right. where, I, where I belong. That's correct. Is, is that so, it? Yeah, so it, it's mostly uh, those people who uh, become a citizen and, and uh, through uh, their naturalization, through their spouse, or that they were born there, or the law of return for Germany, Israel, some countries, and it's very easy if you can prove uh, that. Uh, and, and so that's what happens. Now, uh, you, you tell me, is there anything else that happens if you do a citizen? Well, there are, uh, in sports, it, yeah, it's yeah, an yeah. issue. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, right now, uh, six or seven of the American or U.S. soccer team are dual citizens. They're mostly German. <laughs> and, and but they're good soccer players. They're so. terrific. <laughs> they're terrific. Uh, but they're, and one is from Iceland, and he hasn't been in the U.S. since he was three years old. He was born in the U.S. But the others were born to German mothers and German servi uh, I mean, U.S. servicemen in Germany. I see. They've never been to uh, America. They don't speak English. But they're great soccer players, and they hold a U.S. passport. And there's another case of Na uh, Naomi Osaka. Uh, her father's Haitian. Her mother is Japanese. She is a Japanese citizen in the U.S., 
but she represents Japan in tennis tournaments. She does not speak Japanese. Mashu Baker won the gold medal for Japan in judo. He's a dual citizen. And then he, he chose Japan to represent. You see, you yeah, see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and there yeah. are others like uh, uh, runners or whatever that uh, if you're on, uh, there's a runner who had U.S.-Japan citizenship, but she wasn't good enough for the U.S. team, but she made it for the Japanese running team. Uh -huh. so, so there may be some occasions when we don't care where you, whether you're a dual citizen <laughs> as long as we win. Uh, well, you know, yeah, right. Human but, nature tells us, say, but, sometimes but, we care, but yeah. other times if we're winning, Hey, but it's but okay. dual citizenship also, uh, now I'm just talking about U.S. Uh, living abroad, during the earthquake, yeah. uh, there were, uh, the U.S. Embassy said, we'll provide uh, a free uh, passage for you to get out of Japan. To Americans. Uh, through through U.S. Yeah, US citizens only. Suppose uh, my, uh, there was a, a terrible calamity in Hawaii, and a ship came to uh, take away Japanese citizens back to Japan. My, uh, my daughter would fit in that boat. Yeah. I won't. Yeah, 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 <laughs> well, yeah. If she can take me, that's great. But yeah. you see how you yeah. don't think about it. It's like your navel. Uh, your navel, if it it's gets infected, you think about it. Or you, uh, there's hot water, you, oh, it's a good feeling. But you don't think about your navel. And <laughs> most people who have dual citizenship or tr uh, multiple citizenship don't really think about it until something really good uh, uh, or really bad happens. Uh, example, if you have an Irish passport or uh, 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 Canadian or Australian, uh, the, the universities there are top notch. You pay nothing. You send in, your children in there. Ireland, in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ireland. Uh, Trinity yeah. College. Yeah. Top, uh, university. Top. Uh, you pay nothing. Look, with the time we have left, why do we need duals? I mean, why can't we all just live together in peace and harmony in the world? And what, what, what is your advice with respect to dual? What, well, what would you tell, what I, would you I, tell I, your family? I, I love my U.S. passport. Uh, if if uh, Japan came to me tomorrow and said they wanted me to do this and that, that that's, I'll think about it. But they've never come to me and said, Ray, we want you as a Japanese. I, I don't really care. I'm really comfortable. I love being an American. Uh, but uh, you see, uh, for uh, some people, they have advantages, but uh, there's some disadvantages also. Military conscription. If you're a citizen of South Korea, Germany, Singapore, Taiwan, if you're male, you have to s report for service if you own, uh, have a passport. But the world citizenship idea, Gary Davis uh, in the 50s and 60s traveled around the world with a world passport, but it's an idea that never came about. Well, look, sad. Ray, thank you. This is a topic we can talk about I, and probably will again. Thank you very much for being my guest today. Good to see you. Good to Thank see you. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you.